ಸ್ವಹಸವಿತೌರವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಭರ್ಗೋ ದೇವಶ್ರೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನಚೋದಯ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಓಂ ಗೋಸ್ಪಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಮಹಂಸ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಂಟಾಕ್ಸಿಕೇಷನ್ ಐ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಔಟ್ ಮೈ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ನೋ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಈವನ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಫ್ರೇಡ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ one day jatindra came to the garden of jadu malik i was there too i asked him what is the duty of man is not it our duty to think of god jatindra replied we are worldly people how is it possible for us to achieve liberation even king yudhishthira had to have a vision of hell this made me very angry I said to him what sort of man are you of all the incidents of <coughs> Yudhishthira's life you remember only his seeing hell you don't remember his truthfulness his forbearance his patience his discrimination his dispassion his devotion to god i was about to say many more things when her they stopped my mouth after a little while jatendra left the place saying he had some other business to attend to many days later i went with captain to see raja surendra tagore as so, as soon as i met him i said i can't address you as raja or by any such title for i should be telling a lie he talked to me a few minutes but even so our conversation was interrupted by the frequent visits of europeans and others a man of rajasic temperament surendra was naturally busy with many things jatendra his eldest brother had been told of my coming but he sent word that he had a pain in his throat and could not go out one day in that state of divine intoxication i went to the bathing ghat on the ganges at baranagar there i saw jaya mukherji repeating the name of god but his mind was so his mind was on something else i went up and slapped him twice on the cheeks at one time rani rasmati was staying in the temple garden she came to the shrine of the divine mother as she frequently did when i worshiped kali and asked me to sing a song or two on this occasion while i was singing i noticed she was shouting the flowers for worship absent mindedly at once i slapped her on the cheeks she became quite embarrassed and sat there with folded hands alarmed at the state of mind myself i said to my cousin herde haladhari just see my natural just see my nature how can i get rid of it after praying to the divine mother for some time with great yearning i was able to shake off this habit his anguish at worldly talk when one gets into such a state of mind one doesn't enjoy any conversation but that about god i used to weep when i heard people talk about worldly matters when i accompanied mathur babu on a pilgrimage we spent a few days in banaras at raja babu's house one day i was seated in the drawing room with mathur babu 
Radha, Babu and others, hearing them talk about various worldly things such as their business losses and so forth, I went bitterly and I wept bitterly and said to the Divine Mother, Mother, where have you brought me? I was much better off in the temple garden at Dakshineswar. Here I am in a place where I must bear about women and gold, but at Dakshineswar I could avoid it. The master asked the devotees, especially Narendra, to rest a while, and he himself lay down on the smaller couch. His ecstasy in Kirtan. Late in the afternoon, Narendra sang Rakhal, Latu, and Hazra and Priya. Narendra's Brahma friend were present. The singing was accompanied by the drum. Meditate, O oh my mind, on the Lord Hari, the stainless one, pure spirit through and through. How peerless is the light that in him shines, how soul bewitching his, his wondrous form, how dear is he to all his devotees. After this song, Narendra sang, O oh, when will dawn for me the day of blessedness, when he who is all good, all beauty and all truth will light the inmost shrine of my heart, when shall I sink at last ever beholding him into that ocean of delight, Lord, as infinite wisdom thou shalt enter my soul and my unquiet mind, made speechless by the sight, will find a heaven at the feet in my heart firmament. O Lord, Thou wilt arise at blissful immortality. And as when the Chakura beholds the rising moon, it sports about for every joy, so too shall I be filled with heavenly happiness when thou appearest unto me. Thou one without a second, all peace, the King of Kings. At thy beloved feet I shall renounce my life, and so at last shall gain life's goal. I shall enjoy the bliss of heaven while yet on earth. Where else is a boon so rare bestowed? Then shall I see thee, thy glory pure and untouched by stain. As darkness flees from light, so will my darkest sins desert me at thy dawn's approach. Kindle in my, O Lord, the blazing fire of faith. To be the pole star of my life, O succor of weak, fulfill my own desire. Then shall I bathe both day and night in the boundless bliss of thy love and utterly forget myself, O Lord, attaining thee. Narendra sang again. With weaving face, chant the sweet name of God, till in your heart the nectar overflows. Drink of it ceaselessly and share it with all. If ever your heart runs dry, parched by the flames of worldly desire, chant the sweet name of God, and heavenly love will moisten your arid soul. Be sure, O mine, you never forget to chant his holy name when danger stares in your face. Call on him, your father, compassionate. With his name's thunder, snap the fetters of sin. Come, let us fulfill our heart's desire by drinking deep of everlasting joy made one with him in love's pure ecstasy. 
Now Narendra and the devotees began to sing Kirtan, accompanied by the drum and cymbals. They moved round and round the master as they sang, Immerse yourself for evermore, O mind, in him who is pure knowledge and pure bliss. Next they sang, Oh, when will dawn for me that day of blessedness? When he who is all good, all beauty, and all truth will light the inmost shrine of my heart. At last Narendra himself was playing on the drums and he sang with the master full of joy. With beaming face chant the sweet name of God. When the music was over, Sri Ramakrishna held Narendra in his arms a long time and said, You have made us so happy today. The floodgate of the Master's heart was open so wide that night that he could hardly contain himself for joy. It was eight o'clock in the evening, intoxicated with the divine love. He paced the long veranda north of his room. Now and then he could be heard talking to the Divine Mother. Suddenly he said in an excited voice, What can you do to me? Was the Master hinting that Maya was helpless before him since he had the Divine Mother for his support? Narendra, M and Priyavar going to spend the night at the temple garden. This pleased the master highly, especially since Narendra would be with him. The Holy Mother, who was living in the Mahabat, had prepared the supper. Narendra bore the greater part of the master's expenses. The meal was ready and the plates were set out on the southeast veranda of the master's room. Near the east door of his room, Narendra and the other devotees were gossiping. Narendra, how do you find the young men nowadays? And they are not bad, but they don't receive any religious instructions. Narendra, but from my experience, I feel they are going to the dogs. They smoke cigarettes, indulge in frivolous talk, enjoy foppiness, foppishness, play to truant, and do everything of that sort. I have even seen them visiting questionable places. And I did not notice such things during our student days. Narendra, perhaps you did not mix with the students intimately. I have even seen them talking with people of immortal character. Perhaps they are on terms of intimacy with them. And it is strange indeed. Narendra, I know that many of them form bad habits. It would be proper if the guardians of the boys and the authorities kept their eyes on these matters. They were talking thus when Sri Ramakrishna came to them and asked with a smile, Well, what are you talking about, Narendra? I have been asking them about the boys in the school. The conduct of students nowadays is not all that it should be. The master became grave and said to M rather seriously, This kind of conversation is not good. It is not desirable to indulge in any talk but talk of God. You are their senior and you are intelligent. You should not have encouraged them to talk about such matters. Narendra was then about 19 years old and M about 28. Thus admonished M felt embraced and the others also fell silent. While the devotees were enjoying their meal, Sri Ramakrishna stood by and watched them with intense delight. That night the master's joy was very great. 
after supper the devotees rested on the mat spread on the floor of the master's room they began to talk with him it was indeed a mart of joy the master asked narendra to sing the song beginning with the line in wisdom's firmament the moon of love is rising full narendra sang and other devotees played the drums and cymbals in wisdom's firmament the moon of love is rising full and love's flood tide in surging waves is flowing everywhere o lord how full of bliss thou art victory unto thee on every side shine devotees like stars around the moon their friend and lord all merciful joyously plays with them behold the gates of paradise today are open wide the soft spring wind of the new day raises fresh waves of joy gently it carries to the earth the fragrance of god's love till all the yogis drunk with bliss are lost in ecstasy upon the sea of the world unfolds the lotus of the new day and there the mother sits enshrined in blissful majesty see how the bees are mad with joy sipping the nectar there behold the mother's radiant face which so enchants the heart and captivates the universe about her lotus feet bands of ecstatic ecstatic holy men are dancing in delight what matchless loveliness is here what infinite content pervades the heart when she appears o brothers says premdas i humbly beg you one and all to sing the mother's praise sri ramakrishna sang and danced and the devotees danced around him a devotee's dream when the song was over the master walked up and down the northeast veranda where hazra was seated with n the master sat down there he asked a devotee do you ever have dreamed devotee yes sir the other day i dreamed a strange dream i saw the whole world and wept in water there was water on all sides a few boats were visible but suddenly huge waves appeared and sank them i was about to board a ship with a few others when we saw a brahmin walking over that expanse of water i asked him how can you walk over the deep the brahmin said with a smile oh there is no difficulty about that there is a bridge under the water i said to him where are you going to bhavanipur the city of the divine mother he replied wait a little i cried i shall accompany you master oh i am thrilled to hear the story devotee the brahmin said i am in a hurry it will take you some time to get out of the boat good bye remember this path and come after me master oh my hair is standing on end please be initiated by a guru as soon as possible shortly before midnight narendra and the other devotees lay down on a bed made on the floor of the master's room at dawn some of the devotees were up they saw the master naked as a child pacing up and down the room repeating the names of the various gods and goddesses his voice was sweet as nectar now he would look at the ganges now stop in front of the pictures hanging on the wall and bow down before him before them chanting all the while the holy names in his sweet voice he chanted veda purana tantra gita gayatri bhagavata bhagta bhagwan referring to the gita he repeated many times ta gi ta gi ta gi now and then he would say oh mother 
thou art verily Brahma and thou art verily Shakti. Thou art Purusha and thou art Prakirti. Thou art Virat, thou art the Absolute and thou does not manifest thyself as the Relative. Thou art verily very, very the 24 Cosmic Principles. In the meantime, the morning service had begun in the temples of Kali and Radhakanta. Sounds of conch shells and cymbals were carried on the air. The devotees came outside the room and saw the priests and servants gathering flowers in the garden for the divine service in the temple. From the Nahabat floated the sweet melody of musical instruments beheating the morning hours. Narendra and the other devotees finished their morning duties and came to the master. With a sweet smile on his lips, Sri Ramakrishna was standing on the northeast veranda close to his own room. Narendra, we noticed several sannyasis belonging to the sect of Nanak in the Panchavati. Master, yes, they arrived here yesterday. To Narendra, I would like to see you all sitting together on that mat. As they sat there, the master looked at them with evident delight. He then began to talk with them. Narendra asked about spiritual discipline. Master, Bhakti, love of God is the essence of all spiritual discipline. Through love one acquires renunciation and discrimination naturally. Disciplines of Tantra, Narendra, is not it true that the Tantra prescribes spiritual discipline in the company of women? Master, that is not desirable. It is a very difficult path and often causes the aspirant's downfall. There are three such kinds of discipline. One may regard woman as one's mistress or look on him oneself as her handmaid or as her child. I look on woman as my mother. To look on oneself as as her handmaid is also good, but it is extremely difficult to practice spiritual discipline looking on woman as one's mistress. To regard oneself as her child is a very pure attitude. The sannyasis belonging to the sect of Nanak entered the room and greeted the master saying, Namo Narayanaya. Sri Ramakrishna asked them to sit down. All is possible with God, Master. Nothing is impossible for God. Nobody can describe His nature in words. Everything is possible for Him. There lived at a certain place two yogis who were practicing spiritual discipline. The sage Narda was passing that way one day. Realizing who he was, one of the yogis said, You have just come from God himself. What is he doing now? Narada replied, Why I saw him making camels and elephants pass and repass through the eyes of a needle. At this the yogi said, Is that anything to wonder at? Everything is possible for God. But the other yogi said, What? Making elephants pass through the eye of a needle, is that ever possible? You have never been to the Lord's dwelling place. At nine o'clock in the morning, while the master was still sitting in his room, Manmohan arrived from Konagar with some members of his family. In answer to Sri Ramakrishna's kind inquiries, Manomohan explained that he was taking them to Calcutta. The master said, Today is the first day of the Bengali month, an inauspicious day for undertaking a journey. I hope everything will be well with you. With a smile, he began to talk of other matters. 
When Narendra and his friends had finished bathing in the Ganges, the master said to them earnestly, Go to the Panchavati and meditate there under the banyan tree. Shall I give you something to sit on it? Discrimination and Dispassion About half past ten, Narendra and his Brahmo friends were meditating in the Panchavati. After a while, Sri Ramakrishna came to them M2 was present. The master said to the Brahmo devotees, In meditation one must be absorbed in God. By merely floating on the surface of the water, can you reach the gems lying at the bottom of the sea? Then he sang, Taking the name of Kali, dive deep down, O mind, into the heart's fathomless depths where many a precious gem lies hid. But never believe the bird of the ocean bear of gems. If in the first few dive, dives you fail, with firm resolve and self-control, dive deep and make your way to Mother Kali's realm, down in the ocean depths of heavenly wisdom lie the wondrous pearls of peace, O oh mind, and you yourself can gather them. If you but have pure love and follow the scripture's rule, within those ocean depths as well, six alligators lurk, lust, anger, and the rest swimming about in the Search of prey, smear yourself with the turmeric of discrimination. The very smell of it will shield you from their jaws. Upon the ocean bed lie strewn unnumbered pearls and precious gems. Plunge in, say Ramprasad, and gather up handfuls there. Narendra and his friends came down from their seats on the raised platform of the Panchavati and stood near the master. He returned to his room with them. The master continued, When you plunge in the water of the ocean, you may be attacked by alligators, but they won't touch you if your body is smeared with turmeric. There are no doubt six alligators, lust, anger, avarice, and so on, within you in the heart's fathomless depths. But protect yourself with the turmeric of discrimination and renunciation, and they won't touch you. Futility of mere lecturing. What can you achieve by mere lecturing and scholarship without discrimination and dispassion? God alone is real and all else is unreal. God alone is substance and all else is non-entity. That is discrimination. First of all, set God in the shrine of your heart and then deliver lectures as much as you like. How will the mere repetition of Dharma profit you if you are not endued with discrimination and dispassion? It is the empty sound of a conch shell. There lived in a village a young man named Padmalochan. People used to call him Podo for short in this village there was a temple in a very dilapidated, dilapidated condition. It contained no image of God. Aswatha and other plants sprang up on the ruins of its walls. Bats lived inside and the floor was covered with dust and the droppings of the bats. The people of the village had stopped visiting the temple. One day after dusk, the villagers heard the sound of a conch shell from the direction of the temple. They thought perhaps someone had installed an image in the shrine and was 
performing the evening worship. One of them softly opened the door and saw Padmalochan standing in a corner blowing the conch. No image had been set up. The temple had not been swept or washed, and filth and dirt lay everywhere. Then he shouted to Podo, You have set up no image here within this shrine, O fool, blowing the conch. You simply make confusion worse confounded. Day and night, eleven bats scream there incessantly. Purification of mind. There is no use in merely making a noise if you want to establish the deity in the shrine of your heart. If you want to realize God, first of all, purify the mind. In the pure heart, God takes his seat. One cannot bring the holy image into the temple if the droppings of beds are all around. The eleven beds are our eleven organs, five of action, five of perception, and the mind. First of all, invoke the deity and then give lectures to your heart's content. First of all, dive deep, plunge to, to the bottom and gather up the gems. Then you may do other things, but nobody wants to plunge. People are without spiritual discipline and prayer, without renunciation and dispassion. They learn a few words and immediately start to deliver lectures. It is difficult to teach others. Only if a man gets a command from God after realizing him, is he entitled to teach. Thus conversing, the master came to the west end of the veranda and stood by his side. Sri Ramakrishna had repeated again and again that God cannot be realized without discrimination and renunciation. This made him extremely worried. He had married and was then a young man of 28 educated in college in the western way. Having a sense of duty, he asked himself, do discrimination and dispassion mean giving up women and gold? He was really at a loss to know what to do. And to the master, what should one do if one's wife says, you are neglecting me, I shall commit suicide, master, in a sore, serious tone. Give up such a wife if she proves an obstacle in the way of spiritual life. Let her commit suicide or anything else she likes. The wife that hampers her husband's spiritual life is an ungodly wife. Emerged in deep thought and stood leaning against the wall. Narendra and the other devotees remained silent a few minutes. The master exchanged several words with them. Then suddenly going to M, he whispered in his ear, but if a man has sincere love for God, then all come under his control. The king wicked persons and his wife. Since love of God on the husband's part may eventually help the wife to lead a spiritual life. If the husband is good, then through the grace of God, the wife may also follow his example. This had a most soothing effect on Anne's worried mind. All the while he had been thinking let her commit suicide, what can I do? M to the master, this world is a terrible place indeed. Master to the devotees, 
That is the reason Chaitanya said to his companion Nityananda, Listen, brother, there is no hope of salvation for the worldly minded. On another occasion, the master had said to him privately, Yes, there is no hope for a worldly man if he is not sincerely devoted to God. But he has nothing to fear if he remains in the world after realizing God. Nor need a man have any fear whatever of the world if he attains sincere devotion by practicing spiritual discipline now and then in solitude. Chaitanya had several householders among his devotees, but they were householders in name only, for they lived unattached to the world. It was noon, the worship was over, and food offerings had been made in the temple. The doors of the temple were shut. Sri Ramakrishna sat down for his meal, and Narendra and the other devotees partook of the food offerings from the temple. Sunday, October 22, 1882. It was the day of Vijaya, the last day of the celebration of the worship of Durga, when the clay image is immersed in the water of a lake or river. About nine o'clock in the morning, M was seated on the floor of the master's room at Dakshaneswar near Sri Ramakrishna, who was reclining on the small couch. Rakhal was then leaving with the master and Narendra and Bhavnath visited him frequently. Baburam had seen him only once or twice. Master, did you have any holiday during the Durga Puja? M. Yes, sir. I went to Kesab's house every day for the first three days of the worship. Master, is that so? M. I heard there a very interesting interpretation of the Durga Puja. Master, please tell me all about it. M. Kesab Sen held daily morning prayers in his house, lasting till 10 or 11. During these prayers, he gave the inner meaning of the Durga Puja. He said that if anyone could realize the Divine Mother, that is to say, could install Mother Durga in the shrine of his heart, then Lakshmi, Saraswati, Kartika and Ganesha would come there of themselves. Lakshmi means wealth, Saraswati knowledge, Kartika strength and Ganesha success. By realizing the Divine Mother within one's heart, one gets all this without any effort whatever. Sri Ramakrishna listened to the description questioning and now and then about the prayers conducted by Kesab. At last he said to M, don't go hither and thither, come here alone. Those who belong to the inner circle of my devotees will come only here. Boys like Narendra, Bhavnath and Rakhal are my very intimate disciples. They are not to be thought lightly. They are not to be thought lightly of. Feed thirteen them one day. What do you think of Narendra? And I think very highly of him, sir. Narendra, Narendra's many virtues. Master, have not you observed his many virtues? He is not only well versed in music, vocal and instrumental but he is also very learned. Besides, he has controlled his passions and declares he will lead a celibate life. He has been devoted to God since his very boyhood. Meditation on God with form. How are you getting along with your meditation nowadays? What aspect of God appeals to your mind with form or without form? And, sir, now I cannot fix my mind on God with form. On the other hand, I can't concentrate steadily on God without form. 
Master, now you say that the mind cannot be fixed all of a sudden on the formless aspect of God. It is wise to think of God with form during the primary stages. And do you mean to suggest that one should meditate on clay images? Master, why clay? These images are the embodiments of consciousness. And even so, one must think of hands, feet and other parts of body. But again, I realize that the mind cannot be concentrated unless one meditates in the beginning on God with form. You have told me so. Well, can, well God can easily assume different forms. May one meditate on the form of one's own mother. Master, yes, the mother should be adored. She is indeed an embodiment of Brahma. I am sat in silence. After a few minutes, he asked the master, What does one feel while thinking of God without form? Is not it possible to describe it? After some reflection, the master said, Do you know what is what it is like? He remained silent a moment and then said a few words to M about one's experience at the time of the vision of God with and without form. Master, you see, one must practice spiritual discipline to understand this correctly. Suppose there are treasures in a room. If you want to see them and lay hold of them, you must take the trouble to get the key and unlock the door. After that, you must take the treasures out. But suppose the room is locked and standing outside the door, you say to yourself, Here I have opened the door. Now I have broken the lock of the chest. Now I have taken out the treasure. Such brooding near the door will not enable you to achieve anything. You must practice discipline. Brahma and Divine Incarnations <clears throat> The Jnanis think of God without form. They don't accept the Divine Incarnation. Praising Sri Krishna, Arjuna said, Thou art Brahma Absolute. Sri Krishna replied, Follow me and you will know whether or not I am Brahma Absolute. So saying, Sri Krishna led Arjuna to a certain place and asked him what he saw there. I see a huge tree, said Arjuna, and on it I notice fruits hanging like clusters of blackberries. Then Krishna said to Arjuna, Come nearer and you will find that these are not clusters of blackberries, but clusters of innumerable Krishnas like me hanging from the tree. <laughs> In other words, divine incarnations without number appear and disappear on the tree of the Absolute Brahma. <coughs> Kavir Das was strongly inclined to the formless God. At the mention of Krishna's name, he would say, Why should I worship him? The gopis would clap their hands while he performed a monkey dance with a smile. But I accept God with form when I am in the company of people who believe in that ideal, and I also agree with those who believe in the formless God. And smiling, you are as infinite as he of whom we have been talking. Truly no one can fathom your depth. Master smiling, ah, I see you have found it out. Let me tell you one thing. One should follow various paths. One should practice each creed for a time. In a game of Satrancha, a piece can't reach the center square until it completes the circle. But once in the square, it cannot be overtaken by any other piece. And that is true, sir. 
master. There are two classes of yogis, the Bahudakas and the Kutichakas. The Bahudakas roam about visiting various holy places and have not yet found peace of mind. But the Kutichakas, having visited all the sacred places, have quieted their minds. Feeling serene and peaceful, they settle down in one place and no longer move about. In that one place they are happy, they don't feel the need of going to any sacred place. If one of them ever visits a place of pilgrimage, it is only for the purpose of new inspiration. I had to practice each religion for a time. Hinduism, Islam, Christianity. Furthermore, I followed the paths of the Shaktas, Vaishnavas, and Vedantists. I realized that there is only one God towards whom all are traveling, but the paths are different. While visiting the holy places, I would sometimes suffer great agony. Once, I went with Mathur to Raja Babu's drawing room in Banaras. I found that they talked there only of worldly matters, money, real estate, and the like. At this, I burst into tears. I said to the Divine Mother, weeping, Mother, where hast thou brought me? I was much better off at Dakshaneswar. In Allahabad, I noticed the same thing that I saw some elsewhere. The same ponds, the same grass, the same trees, the same tamarind leaves. Master's ecstasy at Vrindavan. But one undoubtedly finds inspiration in a holy place. I accompanied Mathur Babu to Vrindavan. Herda and the ladies of Mathur's family were in our party. No sooner did I see the Kalyadaman Ghat than a divine emotion surged up within me. I was completely overwhelmed. Herda used to bathe me there as if I were a small child. In the disk I would walk on the bank of the Jamuna when the cattle returned along the sandy banks from their pastures. At the very sight of those cows, the thought of Krishna would flash in my mind. I would run along like a madman crying, Oh, where is Krishna? Where is my Krishna? I went to Shama Kunda and Radha Kunda in a palanquin and got out to visit the holy Mount Govardhan. At the very sight of the mount, I was overpowered with the divine emotion and ran to the top. I lost all consciousness of the world around me. The residents of the place helped me to come down. On my way to the sacred pools of Shama Kunda and Radha Kunda, when I saw the meadows, the trees, the shrubs, the birds and the deer, I was overcome with ecstasy. My clothes became wet with tears. I said, O oh Krishna, everything here is as it was in the olden days. You alone are absent. Seated inside the playing queen, I lost all powers of speech. Here they followed the playing queen. He had warned the bearers to be careful about me. Ganga Mai became very fond of me in Vrindavan. She was an old woman who lived all alone in a hut near the Nidhivan. Referring to my spiritual condition and ecstasy, she said, He is the very embodiment of Radha. She addressed me as Dulali. When with her I used to forget my food and drink, my bath, and all thought of going home. On some days, Herda used to bring food from home and feed me. Ganga Mai also would serve me with food prepared by her own hands. 
Ganga Mai used to experience trances at such times a great crowd would come to see her. One day in a state of ecstasy she climbed on her bed soldiers. I did not want to leave her and return to Calcutta. Everything was arranged for me to stay with her. I was to eat double boiled rice and we were to have our beds on either side of the cottage. All the arrangements had been made when Herda said, You have such a weak stomach. Who will look after you? Why, said Ganga, my I shall look after him. I will nurse him. Or, as Herda dragged me by one hand and she by the other, I remembered my mother who was then living alone here in the Nahabatov temple garden. I found it impossible to see, uh, stay away from her and said to Ganga, my no, I must go. I loved the atmosphere of Vrindavan. About 11 o'clock, the master took his meal, the offerings from temple of Kali. After taking his noonday rest, he resumed his conversation with the devotees. Every now and then he uttered the holy word Om or repeated the sacred names of the devotees. About 11 o'clock, the master took his meal the offerings from Temple of Kali. After taking his noonday rest, he resumed his conversation with the devotees. Every now and then he uttered the holy word Om or repeated the sacred names of the deities. After sunset, the evening worship was performed in the temple. Since it was the day of Vijaya, the devotees first saluted the Divine Mother and then took the dust of the Master's feet. Tuesday, October 24, 1882. It was, day, it was 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The master was standing near the shelf where the food was kept. When Balram and M arrived from Calcutta and saluted him, Sri Ramakrishna said to them with a smile, I was going to take some sweets from the shelf, but no sooner did I put my hand on them than a lizard dropped on my body. At once I removed my hand on love. Oh yes, one should observe all these things. You see, Rakhal is ill and my limbs ache, ache too. Do you know what is the matter? This morning I was leaving my bed. I saw a certain person whom I took for Rakhal. All love, oh yes, physical features should be studied. The other day Narendra brought, brought one of his friends, a man with only one good eye. Though the other eye was not totally blind, I said to myself, what is this trouble that Narendra has brought with him? A certain person comes here, but I can't eat any food that he brings. A 
a certain person comes here but I can't eat any food that he brings. He works in an office at a salary of 20 rupees and earns another 20 by writing false bills. I cannot utter a word in his presence because he tells lies. Sometimes he stays here two or three days without going to his office. Can you guess his purpose? It is that I should rec recommend him to someone for his job somewhere else. Balram comes from a family of devout Vaishnavas. His father, now an old man, is a pious devotee. He has a tuft of hair on his head, a rosary of tulsi beads round his neck, and a string of beads in his hand. He devotes his time to the repetition of God's name. He owns much property in Orissa and has built temples to Radha Krishna in Kothar, Vrindavan and other places establishing free guest houses as well. To Balram, a certain person came here the other day. I understand he is the slave of that black hag of a wife. What is, what is it that people do not see God? It is because of the barrier of woman and gold. How impudent he was to say to you the other day, a Pramhansa came to my father who fed him with chicken curry. To my in my present of in my present of my mind, I can eat a little fish soup if it has been offered to the Divine Mother beforehand. I can't eat any meat, even if it is offered to the Divine Mother, but I taste it with the end of my finger, lest she should be angry. Laughter. Well, can you explain the state of my mind? Once I was going from Bardhavan to Kamar Pukar in a bullock cart, when a great storm arose. Some people gathered near the cart. My companions said they were robbers, so I began to repeat the names of God, calling sometimes on Kali, sometimes on Rama, sometimes on Hanuman. What do you think of that? Was the Master hinting that God is one but is addressed differently by different sects? Master to Balram, Maya is nothing but woman and gold. A man living in its midst gracefully loses his spiritual alertness. He thinks all is well with him. The scavenger carries a tub of night soil on his head and in course of time loses his repulsion to it. One gracefully acquires the love of God through the practice of chanting God's name and glories to him. One should not be ashamed of chanting God's holy name. As the saying goes, one does not succeed so long as one has these three same hatred and fear. At Kamar Pukar, they sing Kirtan very well. The devotional music is sung to the accompaniment of drums to Balram. Have you installed any image at Vrindavan? Balram, yes sir, we have a grove where Krishna is worshipped. Chapter 5 The Master and Kesab Master's boat trip with Kesab. It was Friday, the day of the Lakshmi Puja. Kesab Chandra Sen had arranged a boat trip on the Ganges for Sri Ramakrishna. <laughs> About four o'clock in the afternoon, the steamboat with Kesav and his Brahmo followers cast anchor in the Ganges alongside the Kali temple at Dakshineswar. The passengers saw in front of them the bathing ghat and the chandani. 
to their left in the temple compound stood six temples of Shiva and to their right another group of six Shiva temples. The white steeple of the Kali temple, the tree tops of the Panjavati and the slout of pine trees stood high against the blue autumn sky. The gardens between the two Nahabats were filled with fragrant flowers and along the bank of the Ganges were rows of flowering plants. The blue sky was reflected in the brown water of the river. The sacred Ganges associated with the most ancient traditions of Aryan civilization. The outer world appeared soft and serene and the hearts of the Brahmo devotees were filled with peace. Master in Smadi, Sri Ramakrishna was in his room talking with Vijay and Harala, Harlal. Some disciples of Keshav entered. Bowing before the master, they said to him, Sir, the steamer had, has arrived. Keshav Babu has asked us to take you there. A small boat was to carry the master to the steamer. No sooner did he get into the boat than he lost outer consciousness in Samadhi. Vijay was with him. M was among the passengers. As the boat came alongside the steamer, all rushed to the reading to have a view of Sri Ramakrishna. Keshav became anxious to get him safely on board. With great difficulty, the master was brought back to consciousness of the world and taken to a cabin in the steamer. Still in an abstracted mood, he walked mechanically, learning, leaning on a devotee for sport. Keshav and the others bowed before him, but he was not aware of them. Inside the cabin, there were a few chairs and a table. He was made to sit on one of the chairs, Keshav and Vijay occupying two others. Some devotees were also seated, most of them on the floor, while many others had to stand outside. They peered eagerly through the door and windows. Sri Ramakrishna again went into the deep smadi and became totally unconscious of the outer world. As the air in the room was stuffed because of the crowd of people, <coughs> as the air in the room was stuffy because of the crowd of people, Keshav opened the windows. He was embraced to meet Vijay since they had differed in certain principles of the Brahmos Mahas and Vijay had separated himself from Keshav's organization, joining another society. The Brahmo devotees looked wistfully at the master. Gradually, he came back to sense consciousness, but the divine intoxication still lingered. He said to himself in a whisper, Mother, why have you brought me here? They are hazard around and not free. Can I free them? Did the master find that the people assembled there were locked within the prison walls of the world? Did their helplessness make the master address these words to the Divine Mother? God dwells in devotee's heart. Sri Ramakrishna was gradually becoming conscious of the outside world. Nil, Nil Mahadev of Ghazipur and a Brahmo devotee were talking about Pavhari Baba. Another Brahmo devotee said to the Master, Sir, these gentlemen visited Pavhari Baba. He lives in Ghazipur. He is a holy man like yourself. The Master could hardly talk. He only smiled. The devotee continued, Sir, Pavhari Baba keeps your photographs in his room. Pointing to his body, the master said with a smile, just a pillowcase. 
the master continued but you should remember that the heart of the devotee is the abode of god he dwells no doubt in an all beings but he especially manifest himself in the heart of the devotee a landlord may at one time or another visit all parts of his estate but people say he is generally to be found in a particular drawing room the heart of the devotee is the drawing room of god <clears throat> attitude of gyanis and bhaktas he who is called brahma by the gyanis is known as atma by the yogis and as bhagwan by the bhakta the same brahma is called priest when worshiping in the temple and cook when preparing a meal in the kitchen the gyani sticking to the path of knowledge always reasons about the reality saying not this not this brahma is neither this nor that it is neither the universe nor its living beings reasoning in this way the mind becomes steady then it disappears and the aspirant goes into samadhi this is the knowledge of brahma it is the unwavering conviction of the gyani that brahma alone is real and the world illusory all these names and forms are illusory like a dream what brahma is cannot be described one cannot even say that brahma is a person this is the opinion of the gyanis the followers of vedanta philosophy but the bhaktas accept all these states of consciousness they take the waking state to the real also they don't think the world to be illusory like a dream they say that the universe is a manifestation of god's power and glory god has created all these sky stars moon sun mountains ocean man animals they constitute his glory he is within us in our hearts again he is outside the most advanced devotees say that he himself has become all this the 24 cosmic principles the universe and all living beings the devotees of god wants to eat sugar not to become sugar all love do you know how a lover of god feels his attitude is o oh god thou art the master and i am the servant thou art the mother and i am the child or again thou art my father and mother thou art the whole and i am a part he doesn't like to say i am brahma attitude of yogi the yogi seeks the yogi seeks to realize the parmatma the supreme soul his ideal is the union of the embodied soul and the supreme soul he withdraws his mind from sense objects and tries to concentrate it on the parmatma therefore during the first stage of his spiritual discipline he retires into solitude and with undivided attention practices meditation in a fixed posture but the real but the reality is one and the same the difference is only in name he who is brahma is verily atma and again he is the bhagwan he is bhagwan to the followers of the path of knowledge parmatma to the yogis and bhagwan to the lovers of god the steamer had been going towards calcutta but the passengers with their eyes fixed on the master and their ears given to his nectar like words were oblivious of its motion dakshineswar with its temples and gardens was left behind the paddles of the boat churning the waters of the ganges with a murmuring sound but the devotees were indifferent to all this spellbound they looked on a great yogi his face lighted with a divine smile his countenance radiating love his eyes sparkling with joy a man who had renounced all god and who knew nothing but god unceasing words of wisdom flowed from his lips reasoning of gyanis master the gyanis who adhere to the 
non dualistic philosophy of vedanta say that the acts of creation preservation and destruction the universe itself and all its living beings are the manifestations of shakti the divine power if you reason it out you will realize that all these are as illusory as a dream brahma alone is the reality and all else is unreal even this very shakti is unsubstantial like a dream but though you reason all your life unless you are established in samadhi you cannot go beyond the jurisdiction of shakti even when you say i am meditating or i am contemplating still you are moving in the realm of shakti within its power so i conclude this video at this point next video number 5 will start with the identity of brahma and shakti thank you for watching this video namaste my dear friends namaste